Hi, I'm Bobby Chu, and I also have on here my co-host, the amazing, the incredible Chaos Adera. We're both Emmy-winning creators slash artists that work in film. Welcome to our 90 Mac Life Drawing class. This is a free class every Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, 12 p.m. Eastern Time. We do 90 minutes of life drawing together here on my YouTube channel. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification button so you get an email notification whenever there's a new class or video. How this works is pretty simple. We do four one minute poses, four two minute poses, four five minute poses, and then five 10 minute poses, and that's it. That's the 90 minute art challenge. Each week is a different topic. When you're done the session, post your sketches on social media and hashtag it 90 min art challenge so everyone can see your sketches. We'll do the same. Also, if I may recommend something for all the artists out there looking to really level up quickly, I highly recommend schoolism.com. I teach on there as well as many of the top artists in the industry. So when you subscribe to Schoolism, you get access to the entire library of courses, over 50 courses in total, as well as access to exclusive live webinars every week. Just sign up at schoolism.com. The 90 Mac Life Drawing class is also brought to you by Lightbox Expo. It's the ultimate event to network and meet the artists and creatives behind your favorite movies, TV shows, animations, illustrations, and games. We expect over 10,000 artists attending this year and hundreds of guests and speakers. This is happening October 14th to 16th, 2022 in Pasadena, California. Lightbox Expo also has a Discord where artists meet to do the 90 Mac life drawing classes together, as well as other fun activities and events. All right, now on to today's life drawing session. Okay, hey everybody, and welcome to the 90 Mac life drawing class, or the sketch group, I kind of want to call it from now on. So why don't we get right into it. These are Roger Deakins films, this amazing cinematographer, starting off with one minute sketches, starting right now. I should have got my brush ready. Same. Someone on YouTube said, I enjoyed the podcast you had with the Bancroft brothers. Oh, yeah, those guys are great. Uh, Tony Bancroft actually gave us our first job as Imagine Some Studios uh, 17 years ago. Oh, that's, that's cool. You guys go way back then. Yeah. I think Kay was only four at the time. Because she's 21 now. You get it? <laughs> Anyways, okay. Next one minute pose. Here we go. Also, just so you know, which films are all these from? So this is gonna be a nice little kind of a uh, educational thing as well as we sketch you can kind of put into the chat where you think this movie is from, where you think this still frame is from. And then the next, uh, the next frame, the next subject has the answer. Okay, so a nice little quiet game as we all sketch together. I think the winner for that one was Nameless King. Yeah. He called it yeah. Dick Lebowski. <laughs> nice. He answered the trivia correctly before we announced there was a trivia. That's the press. Oh. <laughs> yes, for Head of the game. Head of the game. <laughs> These are great, though. You know, little one minute little comps like this. Really mm -hmm. tough, but really fun. Really helpful. All right. Next one minute pose.
Now, those first two films, those were, I would say those are a little easier to get. This one, I actually forget where the heck I got this from. Again, Nameless King was first. So oh, wow. Many, many had it right, though. Good job, everyone. This one's yes. turning it up a little bit. Where is this one from? It is a tough one. It's beautiful, though, isn't it? Mm. The framing of it. Yeah, it's very iconic. It feels very iconic, even though we don't recognize it. I love how the more you look at it, the more you kind of see. I love those kind of The more you discover. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. It's like instantly you can see a, a fire, but then you look a little closer and you can see a building. And then you see the gun, of course. Okay, last one minute pose. Skyfall is a James Bond movie. Oh, I didn't expect that at all. It's cool. I believe Tyler had it right. Yeah, Tyler was the only one who guessed it right. Yeah. Oh. But even he was. Even he was doubtful because he had a question mark after. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Some people were asking, um, like, who, who is the person that we're studying, right? Like, oh, yeah. Cinemat and cinematography, like what it is, maybe you guys can chat a little bit about that. Cinematography is pretty much like the look of the film, right? Like, um, right, Kay? Like what kind of camera are we using? What kind of lighting are we using? Um, right. The language of the cameras and the shots. Right. Like, look at this shot. What a cool shot this one is. That's crazy. I draw faster. Wow, Andy Norton had the last one correct. Oh, really nice that was a tough one i didn't even know what it was and i'm, I'm the one that made the boards <laughs> recognize this show we're currently on just one to wear from yeah and the nice shots try to remember them everybody put them add them into your mental library for the future you know that's what that's what really helps With cinematography, is there as well like color in a factor? Yeah. Yeah, to establish mood. What do different colors represent? Right, Kate? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's, you know, a lot of symbolism to Yeah. Like, I remember there was this one film that Kay and I were talking about where the, the star, he was, um, he was very sad, but he was a really tough guy, right? And so instead of showing him cry, it showed a reflection of him against the mirror where it was raining outside and you could see the, the rain coming down the windows, right? Over his reflection. So these kind of really smart things that you may not fully notice when you're watching the film, but you definitely feel it. Now, bonus points for whoever got that last one right. Did anybody get that last one right? No. 
like that was a really good guess from Andy like but that's not a movie so he guessed seven years in Tibet uh, that's not like it's not I don't think uh, Roger <coughs> Deacons that, uh, did that one did that movie but yeah some really of these nice get there. some of these get kind of tough because mm. also Roger Deakins has worked in movies since the 70s I believe yeah so there's a lot of work I know this one though this was an amazing movie Imagine you you're the one that had to draw all the math on the board. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's probably stuff like, "Hi, mom." <laughs> Serious man, I I don't know what that is. So you, you knew that? No. No, I actually thought it was a different one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I fell into the trap that I think more people in chat fell for because they guessed the same one as mine. Andy actually had him correct. So Andy Norton again. Oh wow, movie buff in our midst. Very cool. There's a question from Todd Rhodes on the YouTube chat. Can we have a 90 mech with dinosaurs? Where do we get the reference? That's the only thing. A good dino reference. <laughs> Maybe some Jurassic Park kind of uh, stills or something. Did anybody get the last one? 1984? That was a good one. Mm -hmm. I that. Eric, I guess is correct. Oh, shoot. Way to go, Eric. Have a tough one. Oh, I believe. Did I do this one with a 90 Mac or close to it? Something with a gas station? No, it's just a gas uh, station. 
<laughs> but yeah, it, no, you're right. We did do a Nighty Mac with a gas station, but it wasn't the same. Different much. gas station. Yes. Yeah, I'm with the Nameless King on this guess. I'm curious if, he, if we are correct. What did you guess? Prisoners. Have you seen Prisoners? Like it's uh, the movie with uh, Hugh Jackman and uh, Jake Gyllenhaal about like, what I remember his daughter getting abducted. Jenkins' oh. character's daughter, and he goes to look for it, even though the police gave up or something. That's what I remember. Wow. Well, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't. I feel like I've seen it, but then I kind of forgot. Yeah, I the the most iconic part is where he, I think he gets buried alive or something. That's what I remember. Oh. Um, there's a part in the movie somewhere, and like it's it's a really good movie. I saw uh, that Roger was also working on uh, part of the village, like the movie The Village. Oh yeah, yeah. Just pretty, like I, I like the way how they did it with the red, you know, and that's like the, the red and the yellow. Color. The yeah. red and the yellow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wait a second. That last one was not Shawshank. Yeah, that wasn't Shawshank, but it was way too modern. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know where that one came from. I think I might have... Well, hopefully none of the other stuff is mixed up. <laughs> Oh, Tyrell is saying that Apple TV has uh, a show on with dinos that looks beautiful. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, Michael Habib worked on that. Dr. Michael Habib worked on is is working on that or worked on that. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. He is the expert. <laughs> Absolutely. Tyrell Whitlatch said uh, he's kind of like the, the the Neil deGrasse what's the guy's name Neil deGrasse, Neil deGrasse Tyson deGrasse. or whatever yeah. um, of dinosaurs. Wow. It's like that's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool comparison. And he is saying, could it be Spectre? It, it has like the that kind of pose, you know, the iconic <laughs> with the gun. You know what? I'm gonna find it because it's gonna haunt you. It's gonna haunt me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he worked on Spectre. Oh, you were right. It's Prisoners. It was Prisoners. It was Prisoners, the last yeah. one? Yeah. It's a trick question. <laughs> it's interesting because the movie Prisoner had like this ominous atmosphere 
through to like the second half of the movie most of it where it's constantly raining and it's dark almost every scene so like it had even the image had that atmosphere oh I'm so used that Bobby is on the left and Kay is on the right. <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> know what happened left. today. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you know. Is it Bobby's doing color and Kay is doing uh, black, black and white. And white. So, oh, that's, <laughs> that's is it flipped? Oh, maybe it's flipped for you. Okay. Is it flipped? Does it say flipped, is it flipped? On, flipped? on the corner? On the bottom yes. corner? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh my gosh. I don't know. I just kind of went with the flow because uh, I think you start drawing first. I don't know why it's set up in flip. It's so hilarious. I love how they had a silhouette of Daniel Craig. It's so iconic that you can actually recognize it immediately. Yeah, you can. It's crazy. <laughs> it's right? like, it's crazy. that looks like Daniel Craig. <laughs> That's funny. Do you guys have a favorite uh, Bond person? Bond actor? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Tom Cruise. Okay, Bobby. <laughs> I'll go back to my side. Oh, you're going to go back to your side? Okay. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Let right. me move my little frame thing here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't a, like, I like the Bond films, but I wasn't crazy over them, so I'm not. I've never I, been a big I felt like they're either. all alright. Yeah, I enjoy them. I like Mission Impossible more. I enjoy them, but they're all just little propaganda to me. <laughs> <laughs> I just look fondly back on the voice of Sean Connery. Like, his voice is so iconic. <laughs> In a way, I liked it because of like the gadget things, secret yeah. agent, the mm -hmm. mission. If it has an art heist, then it would be like more. Uh, I would be more happy. <laughs> I don't know. It's just. Uh, yeah. This is a cool atmosphere. I don't know which movie this is. I think we're getting some pretty good guesses in the chat. I love a good spy movie though, like or a good spy TV show. I like the one that was on Apple TV recently, which was Slow Horses, I think it was. It was pretty good. Mm. Yeah, spy movies are fun. Yeah, I watched a bit of that Slow Horses thing. You know, it's like I watch so many different shows but i don't finish so many different shows oh really yeah i'll just start them and then kind of, uh, lose interest or something oh no It's always impressive, like in a landscape, so much content if you really stick out in a good way. 
And like, I felt Stranger Things, the new season, again, was amazing. Yeah, it was. very calming to watch you paint clouds cake. It's like... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, Mir? Relaxing? <laughs> <laughs> clouds are relaxing. Do you have some good clouds where you're at? It's it. They always hit you at a certain time, right? Or a certain, like, then you don't expect, like, wow, those clouds would be yeah. great. Our spring came slow, so it feels like, or it's still spring right now, when it should be sunny. see what this movie was. True Grit. True Grit. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully it was just that one uh, the prisoners thing that was off. Mm -hmm. I feel I like so. I think it, that was when, the only one so far. Yeah. I feel like when we see the answer is saying like Shawshank Redemption, it might be, uh, or if it says prison, <laughs> yeah, the answer is oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I got it, yeah. is asking for a horse's 90 mech. Could be oh. difficult though. Right? Yeah, that's a great one. That's a great idea. Love horses. Yeah, keep them coming if you... I was literally just asking uh, Patricia, what, yesterday, I think? If, if you had any subjects. So I'm always looking for subjects.
uh, Bobby, you were saying Richard Dinkins, it, like the movie you liked the most was Shawshank Redemption, wasn't it? Yeah, that's what kind of got me on this whole Roger Deakins thing. Trisha as I haven't actually seen it yet, so we're probably gonna watch it tonight. Oh, maybe somewhere this week. Cool. What did What did you notice about it that you liked the most, or is it overall? I just really like the the characters, the story, uh, mm. but mainly the characters. It just was really great. Do you have a favorite too, uh, Kay? Um, Shawshank is up there. I do like um, his Blade Runners. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was quite amazing as well. So many colors. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the lot. atmosphere, well, all the mm -hmm. shots, the lighting, storytelling, mm -hmm. color and lighting. Yeah, and that director is killing it too with like Blade Runner, the sequel, Prisoners. He did June, right? And he did. Um, yeah. What's the other one? I really liked the, the one with um, Translator and Alien Invasion. You know what I'm talking about? Arrival? Oh, the yeah, Arrival. that one's great. Arrival, Arrival was amazing. Arrival was so good. Love Arrival. Yeah, that's up there. Sid and Nancy. Did anybody watch Sid and Nancy before? No, I haven't, I haven't actually. No. But Andy guessed it correct. And people are starting to guess on the LBX uh, Discord chat as well. Oh, no way. <laughs> Very cool. And Buna Jit guessed it correctly too. Yeah, for those who are I'm sure the Discord, uh, we, ha we have a Discord and people are already uh, doing the 90 Mac uh, with the LBX mods. That's awesome. So if you wanna have a study buddy, you can go there and try together. It's really recommended everybody because if you are doing it by yourself, there's less things to hold you accountable. And if you're if you have a study group, then you at least know. Oh shoot! I need to be there because everybody else can be there. Another way to hold yourself accountable is to press the subscribe button and to press the uh, notification button or bell or whatever it is. Then you'll be notified when uh, a new stream comes out, new videos come out, that kind of thing. I see a few questions in the chat about uh, can anyone join the Discord group and do you have to be a subscriber of Schoolism to access the Discord? It is available for everyone. Uh, so you don't have to have a subscription, you can just join. And in the description of this uh, uh, below, I think Bobby linked it. So you can click on it and it will, be right, yeah. it will be directed right there. And uh, Noah, Nico, and Wentz, and Jonathan already there on voice chat. And they will be there to help you out if you want to draw other people. They're lovely. <laughs> so don't be shy. There's 
a lot of uh, people saying revolution roads. I don't know if it is. Is there any other guesses? It's all pretty much. Midnight special? I don't know if that is something. Uh, this is a question for the Lightbox Expo in person. Um, yeah. A question from Tangerine Chant. Where would uh, you recommend for a first time attendee to explore when going uh, for the con in October? What things to explore at the event? Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. Uh, well, one of the biggest things that's happening there is the Concept Art Awards. So you could really like uh, watch your artistic heroes shine and be celebrated. That's, that's a really wonderful time. Um, get your portfolios ready and get, get your portfolios uh, reviewed for free at our uh, portfolio review section. Because you're not just going to get stuff reviewed. You're going to get stuff reviewed by like some amazing artists. We have such amazing artists uh, lined up for that. Um, then there's also uh, some of the very popular stuff is like life drawing with the, um, with the animals. So we have, you know, we have some pretty incredible animals coming to the event. Uh, Journey, the, ambas the ambassador wolf is coming back. The white wolf, if you've seen that in pictures. Um, our buddy Manny Carrasco has, he's a falconeer as well as artist. So he's gonna be bringing his own falcon to the uh, event, I believe, for people to draw. Um, and probably some other surprises that I can't really mention right now. Uh, <clears throat> draft, no, just joking. <laughs> but maybe for future years or something, that'd be crazy. Uh, what else is there? Of course, you gotta go to uh, the exhibition, the exhibition floor, because there's actually a lot of people that table at Lightbox Expo that don't usually table. So it's a very, very special opportunity there as well. Um, one being somebody right off the top of my head is like Michael Knapp. Oh my goodness. He's a production designer. You know, he was production designer at uh, Blue Sky uh, before when I was still around. Um, and we were talking and he was like, yeah, I haven't done a table forever. And I was like, then you totally got to do a table because that's what we look for uh, at Lightbox. So you can check that out. But I think it, it's really one of those situations where it's like everywhere you look, there's something. You know, we have Lightbox Expo utilizes four different buildings to make this event happen. Not just one building, like four right we have a two-story building where it's nothing but um, talks that are happening in 14 different rooms talks demos uh, panels all sorts of things happening in 14 different rooms then we have um and it's a two-story building you know it's gigantic and then we have the even bigger building the uh, exhibition hall and that's a really, really big building. That's where all the tables are. And then we have the auditorium. The Pasadena Convention Center Auditorium is 
where they have the daytime Emmys. It's where they have America's Got Talent, if you watch that show. Uh, that is absolutely epic and gigantic as well. That's like, it holds 3,000 people. A little bit over 3,000 people, I believe. And then there's another building just dedicated to demos. And that's the four different buildings. So, and then there's like everybody all around as well. So it, it, there's definitely no shortage of things to do. But we will also have a program guide for everybody. So everybody can look and see what are the things happening today. We'll go to those. And yeah, and so many artists will be there that you'll just admire. And uh, I, I know um, Marco Bush, Bushy, mm -hmm. I hope I pronounced his name right. Uh, uh, he messaged in the Discord that he was looking forward to it. And this is the first oh, time for him yeah. in person. Yeah. So he will be there. That's awesome. You came into the Discord. That's awesome. Yeah. Good message. That's great. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, Marco, he, he's going to be presenting as well. So if you'd like to come check out Marco Bucci and, uh, and so many others, like over 300 other people, guests, not attendees. Attendees will be in the thousands, right? It'll be like probably around 10,000 attendees that are all artists. So if you are kind of like shy and you think, oh, I don't know, I'd be coming by myself or anything. I, I honestly, I like, I just almost, almost guarantee that you're, you're going to be fine because there's going to be so many things to do and everybody's so friendly at Lightbox Expo. You know, you'd be very surprised. Like everybody's so um, friendly and open to, meeting and talking with others. Hope that helps. Yeah, people in YouTube chat uh, are really happy to hear and uh, very inspiring to to hear and I would love to meet those people, Tangerine Chance. Yeah, <laughs> let me know. Oh, I'm tangerine, whatever. I'm orange octopus. And I'll be like, oh, dang, yeah. <laughs> I remember retweeting your stuff. Elliot is also going. Good to see. First year. That's awesome. Yeah, this will be Patricia and Melt's first year in person yeah. as well. Mm hmm. We're definitely excited to find out, to explore. Yeah. I think my heart will explode. So many people we have known from the Discord for over, I don't know how many years it is. But three but... years around, about two yeah. years. Yeah. Wow. Is it... So fast. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of hugs, I'm sure, uh, if people are comfortable with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there'll be, um, and also if people are a little concerned and things like that, we, we are paying very, very close attention and uh, constant communication with the city, with the convention center to make sure that we are up to date with everything dealing with um, our safety or health uh, regarding the pandemic and things like that. There's a question from Carlos. Um, I'm slowly getting back into art. Uh, I still have hand pain, but I'm not sure how I can participate in the 90 mech challenges just yet any advice to keep in mind through the process oh you know like um i hesitate to give any advice on like improving your arm and everything because i've gone through arm pains and things and i i know like just because something worked for me doesn't mean it's gonna work for you 
But one thing I found has been quite universal around anybody with pains in their arms or whatever is yoga. To just practice yoga as a part of your uh, regular routine. You know, it gets your your body, your guts, everything kind of moving the way that it should in a non-abrasive way or less abrasive way. Do a beginner yoga if you if you have any hesitations. But as for like how much to draw and things like that, yeah, listen to your body. I would kind of just uh, do that. I agree. And if the, the pain is bad, go to the doctor. Yes. Get it checked out. And in the meantime, like you can maybe do some studies as in like just watching with your eye. That's why cinematography uh, right now is also like how you manipulate, you know, the camera and just looking at movies is so inspiring and it'll train your eye. I know you had some struggles with uh, that too, Bobby, with your, was it neck or was it arm? Everything. <laughs> Everything? Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> the wrist, it started off in the wrist, moved into the, yeah, the arm, the neck, the back, everything. I still deal with stuff. Um, I'm going to physio tomorrow. You know, it's become part of my regular thing, but I can tell you, that I have been getting better. All right, so I think the last one, probably a bunch of people got that one. Head sucker proxy. I think that came up earlier yeah. as well. Yeah, like Andy, Jenna, Matt, they all guessed correctly. Awesome. It's an interesting one. Like mm -hmm. Someone mm -hmm. lying down, people watching. Yeah, the reflection is really cool. Did, did you have some struggles in the past, Kay, with uh, uh, like wrist issues or? Um, it was getting there and then I would do my treatment like yeah yoga stretching it mm -hmm. giving it a break um what else do we do we do like uh this wim hof method that really helps um sauna we ate cold. better too yeah we ate better diet was a huge thing you know, diet actually matters for your certain wrists foods can um, give you more inflammation than others. Like white rice is not really good for that. Like dairy gives you inflammation. Unfortunately, like I love cheese and stuff, but sometimes you gotta cut it. Um, and it also depends on your, you know, your own body, your chemical makeup, right? It's all different for everyone. There's no one freaking no one prescription for, for it um yeah that's so, true yeah. like but i also would caution people from just taking one doctor's opinion right. or one expert's opinion and kind of going with that you know i went to all sorts to figure it out you know like the one I went to for a while an acupuncturist and he kept saying things are going to get better or whatever uh this is going to get better and then it just it didn't and i spent like a good amount of time like months going back and forth with this person uh but eventually i went to a different thing i went to a physiotherapist and then a different acupuncturist and different massage therapist and you know 
uh, it's not a one-stop shop, I think. so that everything in the body in a way is connected and it's always good to take good care of it mentally and physically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. especially as you get older then um, you start to see this separation between your pairs your peers and you depending on if you've been if you've been taking care of yourself yep So true. Yeah, I want to give a little shout out to Jonathan. Makes us, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he gave us like this amazing pancake recipe. And it's uh -huh. not like a pancake, but it is like with oats and with like, uh, like a, sm a, a smashed banana and some eggs. And, uh, just a healthy thing, but then again, gives you energy. For, We've uh, been eating it every day now, right? Since we had the rest oh. of it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Good on you. I do a lot of salads. I like uh, doing like a salad at least twice a week. At least. That's like uh, cutting out the, the flour, the white rice, the noodles and things like that. Um, and then doing more greens actually helped my recovery quite Lots a of bit. Veggies, yeah. There's this list I like to follow if like we're getting sick or something. <laughs> it's just, you know, a list of like good vegetables and fruits, stuff like that. Yeah, I'm no saint, by the way. I'm not like super hardcore with this. I'll still eat white rice and bread and things like that, but just way more or way less and in moderation. Right. Yeah, and every little bit helps, right? Every effort you make to slightly improve it already helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Sometimes I felt like nothing was helping me. <laughs> That's, that's the encouraging part. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like nothing helps. <laughs> yeah, but I get what you mean. No, no, like, that's not you, you, you do. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I'm just saying that just so if that happens to people, they can yeah. go like, yeah, it happens. You know, you just they doesn't matter. Have those moments, yeah. Just stay on it. I had thoughts where I was like, am I ever going to get back to normal? Am I ever going to be able to draw again? Mm. Like, I've had those thoughts as well. Because it got that bad. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, giant reason why I exercise is just because I feel like I need to uh, to keep everything running well that's why you did all those uh, push-ups right <laughs> during life <box. laughs> Yeah, exactly. If it was just to get fit or something, I probably wouldn't have gotten into exercising nearly as much. 
So mm-hmm. in a way, the wrist problems was a blessing. Mm-hmm. Only time tell can tell you what was truly a blessing or a curse, right? Right. I feel like that should be a tweet. I should write it down. Tweet it later. For some reason, I imagine myself now, Kay and Bobby, working out in this <laughs> with weights, <laughs> getting into shape for more drawing. At least we need to get into shape before light box all the walking. I don't know if anyone knows, like, because I don't recognize the movie, but what's happening? He's laying down in such a strange manner. Mm. He is. I would think it's a death sentence kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I get it now. This should be an easy one. <laughs> By the way, the last one, Andy had it again. He, he guessed wrong the first time around, but then he, then he changed his mind. And he had that man as well. Wow, he's nailing it. Yeah. He's giving us a run for our money. I remember that, I don't know for sure, but that one of the actresses, uh, one of the, the, I think it was the protagonist that uh, she was Dutch, like the actress. I'm, pretty new. I'm pretty new uh, into the scene, yeah. She was what? Dutch. Yeah. She, oh, she was Dutch. Yeah, and I think oh. even in our region somewhere. Wow. You're correct. Yeah. You're correct. I forgot about that. Now oh, I wow. You think it's this one right here? Yes. I think so. It's actually her, I think. And that oh, they wow. are mass? Hmm? Sorry? What did you say? Her name is uh, Anna de Armas. The actress? No. Oh, I don't know. No, no, it's another one. It's not a character. She's called Sylvia Hooks. Wow. Yeah, that's the one. That's... She plays a character called Love, but I don't remember which character that is. No. But she's actually, she lives like ne- t- a town over from us. I just saw it. Oh, yeah. no way. <laughs> yeah. I saw it in a local paper and I was like, oh, that's so cool. Ooh. That's awesome. Hey, let her know uh, we mentioned her today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she'll care. She will. I forgot about this whole story, but crazy. So it's neat when, like, uh, 
somebody makes it from your from your region, right? This gives you all Definitely. kind of a, yeah. some pride, some extra pride in where you come from. Yeah, and I also think like when you like when you're young and grow up, you have this tendency to see like Hollywood films as something that's unreachable, that's like distance, and then, mm -hmm. then suddenly if someone near you makes it and it's like ah it's actually attainable yeah I definitely had that feeling by the way you were right Patricia she plays the villain uh, bot robot yeah I, think, replica. Yeah. I yeah. think why I remember her is more because of her story uh, she had this way of like a little bit struggling with um, with her schools and and all oh. that and, and she just did things her way and, and it went well for her so i was like yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's cool don't, don't let anyone stop you darn right I don't know if this is uh, like a, 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 fa a fact or true, but I remember um, uh, Helen Mingyu Chan saying that w why she likes film studies so much is because um, there's like in a kind of in a way less color in it or less color, more like four or maybe three primitive colors because there's like color grading going over it and. Uh, and that way it's it's more of a cleaner way to study because you see you have the, all the colors like right there I don't know if that, that's the same for you guys that you're like more, maybe more quick it's right it's like distilled in like a few kind of um yeah, palettes and elements. Yeah. I find it interesting because I never noticed, or maybe you notice it, but not like it was not obvious in, in my head mm -hmm. that it was like that. Are you okay, Bobby? Yeah, my monitor is on the fritz. Uh oh. I can't paint right now. Oh no. Um, you know what? I'll, I'll try. Restarting? See if this thing will work. I think it's just my monitor. I do some awkward painting over here on this other oh. thing. Uh, sorry to hear that. <laughs> it's okay. It just means good things are gonna happen. <laughs> good things are on their way. It's really weird and ironic that at the top right, while while it stops to work, it says "Dead Man Walk." <laughs> like it's really weird <laughs> for some reason. Yeah, this is going to be really awkward. So keep that in mind as you see me paint, because it's okay. Yeah, it's going to be real bad. New challenge for today. Somebody is guessing ghost in the shell. Mm -hmm. Not pretty. Ghost in the shell had some crazy animatronics. Uh, made by a weather. Yeah. Yeah. Those were great. We got to see those like up close. What? That's, That's amazing. Cool. Yeah, we were we were at this event called Chromacon in uh, New Zealand. And so afterwards we went on a little trip to uh to all the way down to Wellington and uh visited what a 
What an amazing place that is. Mm -hmm. And the people are so great. They're so nice. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> Kiwis are just the friendliest. Yeah. I really like what you have done there with the hand, Bobby. It almost looks as if she's pointing like a dimensional way. Oh, uh, it's beautiful. Thanks. I feel like I'm painting with a mouse. Damn, and painting with a mouse. Gee. No, no, I feel like I'm painting with a mouse. Only the great Craig Mullins paints with a mouse and makes it look good. Yeah, also, if you ever want to meet Craig Mullins, he's in Hawaii, but he's coming to Da, da, da. Anybody guess? Like box expert. <laughs> the, he's in Hawaii really cracked me up. I was like, if you want to meet Craig Mullins, he's in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to draw a little person here. Oh All my right. god, I didn't even draw the person. There he is. He's somewhere here. <laughs> okay, here we go. Can you still see the timer on the screen? Nope. I don't see it on mine. Well, no, not you. you, you would it's still on the stream. Oh, okay, great. It's not on mine. Um, most people guessed that correctly, Patron. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Who was the first one? I don't well, know. Let me scroll up. <laughs> Good job, person. Well, surprise, surprise, it was Andy North. <laughs> wow. Non stop. Andy's killing it. <laughs> yeah. It's really good. I remember this interview, I think it was the Green Norton show for the Blade Runner, the promotions were like Harrison Ford and uh, Ryan Gosling, that he, mid-story, didn't remember Ryan Gosling's name, which was really funny. <laughs> like, and then, then Ryan Gosling had to help him. It's Ryan. <laughs> That's it's so funny. funny. It's also funny like how some people could do that 
and uh, we laugh with them instead of at them. Mm-hmm. You know, but they're very charming people, the way they do it. Yeah, yeah. Then some people they do that, and then we laugh at them uh, instead of with them, or we get mm-hmm. even like turned off by them. Being like, ah, oh, that person, jeez. Because, so, like, uh, Harrison Ford, he just has this natural likability, I feel. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. More issues coming up with my computer. Great. Even when he's like cranky or something, he's still charming in a way. It's yeah. <laughs> I would say he's even, maybe even more charming when he's like a crank. Good point. Good point. <laughs> and my grandpa had that as well. Like he passed away a few years ago, but he. He had this way of like always complaining about everything, mm. but the way and it was like what he said was actually super annoying and frustrating. But you just <laughs> you just laughed about it because the way he did it, like, it's just <laughs> so charming. In some way. Mm-hmm. My grandma is the other way. She will look at the most messed up thing. And then see the bright side of it. And it's like, oh, really? Oh, that's crazy. Jeez, how can you even see a bright side? Dark. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's been through some stuff. That's why. But that's a lovely quality in, in, a, in a person. Right? Yeah. Yeah, this is her second pandemic, the global pandemic, right? The first one was when she was born when she was a little tiny kid uh, after World War One, And she was like, yeah, it's not that big of a deal, honestly. There's a question again, um, and on the YouTube chat. And the question is, how can one get most out of a film study? Do you have maybe ways how you um, mm. how, how you do those studies? Study it many times. 
<laughs> you know, because like, like repeating yourself. Yeah, one, yeah, it's like one time you could do it like, like what I'm doing, right? In black and white tonal study. Another time you could do it like how Kay's doing it, uh, where it's like full color and it's a bit more stylized, right? And um, you could also do it in a way where you're studying it and then you replace the composition with different elements. Like say it's something else looking into uh, the side of a crystal wall or something and they can see their reflection, right? Um, it's constantly studying it, batting it around in many different ways so that you can slowly get away from uh, the actual thing that you're studying and seeing how you can apply the various aspects of that thing to other things, then you truly have owned that knowledge, right? If you can only copy what you see, you don't really own that knowledge yet. It isn't yours. You just literally just copied somebody else's kind of uh, thing. Does that make sense? Makes sense. I believe this person has some um, had some difficulties to understand, like why are they choosing, for example, a yellow light or not a blue, and uh, more of the choices, artistic choices they make. Oh. Um, I don't know if you have an answer for that or like how you interpret it. So maybe certain shots and uh, to understand it better. Um, you know, what they're saying there almost feels like one of those things where it's like you want to learn about why people do the things that they do and then you look for ideas or, or like a actual good examples out there and study them right um but the other one that a lot of people do which is a bit cryptic as well but it's just uh look at the thing see how you feel and try to understand why do you feel like that looking at this piece of uh, art or the shot but you hear that a lot from uh, various artists and such for a reason. Kay does that a lot. Like she'll watch, sorry, I'm talking for you, Kay, but um, Go for it. the things that you love, <laughs> you study and you get to really, really understand those things very, very well. Yeah, you go through an obsession period. But you have to. <laughs> Because everyone in the film industry is obsessive. <laughs> yeah, so here we go. This is the last one. This one doesn't really need any kind of a, uh, answer, I would think, since it's the cover of the uh, today's stream and everything. This is from Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> Gotta watch it. If you haven't watched it, gotta watch it. So good. By the way, the last one was the Big Lebowski. Yeah. And that was literally the big Lebowski, right? <laughs> yes. Staring into the mirror. It was literally the dude. And Mary Bunny had it, had it, had it, the first person. It had a she was so. even faster than Emily. <laughs> oh. Yeah. oh, dethroned. Dethroned. The last uh, Beat image Andy. There. <laughs> Just kidding, Andy. She even did it with a cheeky smiley with it. Mm -hmm. Right? Like you could do a film study where you're, you're uh, studying that shot and then you could be like, well, how would I apply it if it was uh, like a squirrel or something or cartoony bear or something, right? And you could try to apply it like that. 
and see how far you can get. And the more alterations, the more kind of versions, the better you'll understand the thing. And that's why I was like, I need to do a lot of studies. This is so impossible. Oh my gosh. Because I can't see my cursor, by the way, everybody. I can only see it when I put down a mark. <laughs> that's why this is getting so hard. Life is challenging and just go with the flow. <laughs> Be like water. <laughs> You'll get there. No, I'm joking. I think you're doing doing awesome. Even though you don't see the mouse, that's that's kinda that's hard. <laughs> I just gotta state you know my excuses first. <laughs> I like that Kay is already going so misty, like water. Yeah. If you ever need positive reinforcement, Kay, just look in the YouTube chat. <laughs> Everyone's been raving the entire an hour and a half. Oh. <laughs> Hope you guys are enjoying. For some reason, the the first one had like a little bit of a bear, you know, like this on Bobby's like with the ears. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I like it. Or it's a hippo. It's a hippo. Yeah, I have no idea. It's just something. Uh, Navo or Na yeah, Navo is asking uh, on the YouTube chat: Is Lightbox in person this year? Yes. Is it? <laughs> you bet your bottom it will be. Yes, it is. You hear it here first. Oh. On Bobby Choose YouTube channel. <laughs> Lightbox in person. Let's go. And before we end this, I also want to mention like um, Schoolism is having a really awesome sale right now where it's you save over 30% off an annual subscription. And the subscription is already, um, it's already affordable, especially compared to like uh, other traditional forms of education. So you could take advantage of the sale today too. With the Schoolism subscription, you actually get access to all of my courses as well as all of the other instructors' courses. And there's over 50 courses altogether, which is like more than, than what is capable in, in a year, I would say, if you have to do things right. So get on it before, uh, before the sale's over. Go schoolism.com. Yeah, oh. I've noticed like you guys do so much like with the webinars and I was just gonna mention, yeah, thank you. The the webinars, uh this this week's webinar is with the amazing Celine Kim. Ooh. If oh you look God. up Celine <laughs> Kim's work, you're gonna be blown away. Celine's awesome. I'm a massive fan of her. Oh, no. you know. yeah, you should oh. totally uh, make sure you register for that one. I will be there. I will be there. <laughs> I think registration, uh, everybody will get an email tomorrow, I believe, to register, or all the Schoolism subscribers, anyways. Uh, it's free for Schoolism subscribers and exclusive for Schoolism subscribers. It's another great reason to. Uh, get a subscription because there's weekly webinars pretty much weekly you know if, if it's like christmas or something then <laughs> you probably <laughs> missed that yeah celine kim is really really cool uh, and this one is paint design for characters and costume mm -hmm. so, that will be a lot of fun. 
Oh, yeah. That's going to be amazing. Like her, um, she has this uh, website for her portfolio. And if anyone always asks like for advice, I direct them to Celine Kim, uh, her portfolio. Uh, the way she does it is just, I don't know. You can learn a lot from, from her. Oh yeah. That's her student portfolio, by the way. Professionals can learn from her. Like her student stuff was already mind blowing, like mm -hmm. literally mind blowing. Yeah, she has, she did like already like a lot of uh, different um, studies for films. Uh, but, but the one that I liked the most was the Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. Oh, the most I recent remember. one. Yeah, was, was so good. But that, that was, was from so her, her, that was her from student, her student work, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's so amazing about it. It's like she was oh, doing so this awesome. as a student. My goodness. Yeah, I like that one too. It's so hard to draw circles when you can't see the cursor. Oh, Mary Bunny might come to the visit at Lightbox all the way from France. Whoa. Whoa. Let's go, Mary Bunny. Let's go. Let's go. A lot of events where it's like you hope to meet a lot of people, those are the events, like if you're okay with it, uh, those are the kind of events I suggest actually going, just going by yourself. You know, if you can't find anybody to go with, it's actually probably a lot better to just go by yourself because if you're okay with it, you know, if you're, if you're a big time wallflower and you're, you're afraid to, or you're hesitant to talk with anybody, then go with some friends. But if you're like me and you don't mind, uh, you know, talking with people and things like that, then I would actually say go by yourself because you'll meet so many more people. There's this one time we did a workshop in, I want to say Seattle. Okay. You were there and, uh, mm -hmm. and there's this one guy, he came from South Korea by himself. Mm. You remember? Oh, yeah. And um, he was so fun. Could barely speak English. I remember him. Super nice. You know, he got through it to like asking us um, or telling us that he came by himself, and and then he said, he said uh, something like, "Oh, my English isn't that good, and I don't know what to do later today." And we're like, "Hey, come with us." come with the instructors, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden we're just hanging out with this one guy and then he ended up telling us at the dinner, we're all having dinner together. And he was like, you know, um, my friends all laughed at me when I said, and made fun of me when I said I was going to go to Lightbox. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're like, what are you doing? You're going by yourself. You can't even speak English. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. And so we... We made some sort of video or something, right? right with Kay? him? Yeah, or with it... him in the center. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah like so that. much fun. And he was fine. We understood him fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? Once this this stream was done, then my computer went back to normal. Whoa. <laughs> it always, always like that. Right? Life. Yep. Okay, everybody. Well, this has been really wonderful. Next week, we're going to be studying fashion. The Nighty Max sketch group, we're going to be tackling uh, contemporary fashion from nowadays, like Fun normal, stuff. everyday, urban uh, outfits. Mm -hmm. All right, so come back for that. Uh, and we will see you all next week. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Thanks. everybody. For everybody tuning in as well as our mod team thank you to the mods and uh to patricia and nell it's always a blast thank you guys thank you
Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. And of course, the biggest, biggest thanks goes to my amazing partner, okay. Chaos Dara. Thank you so much, Kay. Thank You're you, amazing. Amazing too. All right, let me figure out how to turn this thing off. All right, bye everybody. Bye.